open in my videoing. There we go. Amen. Amen. This call is being recorded. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the God in Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. And as I was just talking with uh, Sister Crawford, this is Super Bowl weekend, oh hallelujah, and we're going to celebrate America's game, the big Super Bowl between the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons, and, and some Miss Crawford asked me, she said, which one you rooting for? I said, I'm like God, I don't root for either one, I just enjoy the game. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm looking forward to the game today. We're heading out to celebrate a, su a Super Bowl party with my my uh, baby sister Mary and her uncle, I mean and her brother, her husband, who I'm calling everything in the world, her, <laughs> her, her husband Lenny. Now amen, amen. So we're looking forward to that celebration tonight as we celebrate the game. Well, today we, we're going to look at the uh, Sunday School lesson. And, and um, you know, it's not many times when I'm studying the Sunday School lesson, I have to pull stuff from all kind of different sources just to make sure that I'm able to, to put this Sunday School lesson into a very nice capsulized manner. So um, our lesson today comes from the the letter Galatians, the epistle of Paul called Galatians, Galatians, and we're going to be looking at um, the third chapter, uh, verses 26 through 29, and the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 7, 1 through 7 in the fourth chapter. So, we're going to go right to the reading of the of the scripture here in a minute um let me just stop and drop and do a word of prayer dear heavenly father we thank you and we praise you for being god and being god all by yourself we ask you lord as we get ready to study this sunday school lesson this day that you bless us and anoint us the heavenly father give us the words to say and how to say them and then lord anoint us afresh uh, the Heavenly Father, that we might be not just hearers of your word, that we might be doers of your word. Help us to receive this word by your power and by your might. And then, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over over this, this teleconference. We plead the blood of Jesus over the Facebook technology. And then we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that's listening, everyone that's going to listen to the recordings later, God over their families, over their ministries, over their communities, over their countries, God. Just touch right now in the name of Jesus that they might be blessed, that they might be blessed, and that they might be healed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So so before I even start reading the text, um, the title that I'm going to place on this text is called Harmony, Harmony, Harmony. In the fullness of time, if if you ever heard a a quartet or beautiful choir singing and everybody was in complete harmony, oh, and they, you heard that beautiful sound that was full part harmony or three part harmony, and everybody sounded so great together. That's that's what this 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 text in a sense is about, and we're gonna have harmony. One day, one day in the fullness of time because Jesus and God have put a plan together that we might have harmony. So let's start reading our text and I'm going to read from uh, New King James Version of the Bible, Galatians chapter, chapter 3 and um, starting at verse 26, Galatians chapter 3 starting at verse 26 all the way down to 29. Listen to the text. 
for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Heirs according to the promise. Then let's go now to Galatians chapter 4, uh, starting at uh, verse 1 all the way down to verse 7. Now I say that the heirs, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under guardian and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, uh, you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Hallelujah. So you say, oh, pastor, you, you, you got to deal with some deep stuff today. Yes, 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 yes. This this text, this text is 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 no uh uh what I call milk baby kind of text. But 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 thanks be to God that anytime you study his word, he can make this word real plain. So this word, this I, I tell you that harmony in the fullness of time the, Sunday school commentaries, they're dealing with living in harmony as God's children, living in harmony as God's children. And, 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 and so the, the key verse that they're dealing with uh, is verse 28. And then and this is how it reads in the uh, King James Version, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond uh, nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And so this text, in this text, if, if, if we are in Christ, our differences do not matter to God. Men, women, boys, girls, people from all nations can be a part of of the same family. God welcomes every believer into his family through Christ Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. And so the key concept that we're looking at is that God's family is made up of people of all nations. Now, now I could start meddling right here. Y'all know I could start meddling. Because that's we we're going through this thing of disharmony right now. We we don't have any harmony in the world right now. We don't have any harmony in 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 in, in America right now. We have division, disharmony. I mean, instead of us sounding like a beautiful quartet, uh, we we're sounding like a punk rock band. <laughs> noise, noise, noise everywhere. Go from one one thing to another, just a bunch of noise, no harmony. It's because everybody's not included into the family. Yeah, yeah, I'm messing with stuff, but I'm gonna go on on because he said, just leave it alone. Do you do you do your lesson? So 
to, to the keys to the kids, keys to the kids, message to the children. Here's here here's here here's how I look at this text in a real simple fashion. God saves us and adopts us into one family. Secondly, if we know Jesus as Savior, then we belong to God's family. Number three, all believers will receive the good things that God has promised to his children. That's, that's what this text is all about. That's what this text is all about. It's that simple. Paul is going through a whole lot of argument, a whole lot of dissertation, trying to explain to the people of, uh, of, of, of Galatia, uh, of the, uh, uh, am I saying the Galateans, he's trying to explain to the Galateans uh, the Galatians, if you will, that, that this is what they need to understand. And it's the reason he's doing that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Today's lesson, um, we're going to look at some learning facts. We're going to get out to some deep stuff to describe the, the means by which, which God's grace makes us, makes all his people to be equal standing before him. See, see that that's where the rebel meets the road, you know. The, the, we're going to talk about God's grace in all of this. And then the principle, biblical principle we're going to look at is to explain the connection between faith in Christ and being of Abraham's seed. Oh, y'all know I'm going to enjoy that part because I love talking about being the seed of Abraham. And then to, to, to uh, what we're going to leave from this is, is as, as people... We, we got to find ways that, that we can demonstrate uh, this commitment to be equal and, and stand with all Christians before God. And, and, and let me put it in a plain sense. Martin's, Martin King, and this, this, this is Black History, he says, I have a dream that one day, that one day, my children will be judged not by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. Yeah, yeah, that, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. We're going for this harmony where, where everybody will be judged by the fact, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we are all adopted into the family of God. No, that does not require me to go around and point out your religion and then banning you and putting you out of our country and all of that state and then come and go to war against you. No, if you had another religion, I'm going to still tell you about my Jesus. And just maybe, <laughs> just maybe, I might be able to convince you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And, 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 and as a matter of fact, I really don't have to do the convincing. That's the Lord's business. <laughs> All I got to do is the witnessing and the testifying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to show you my love. Because, you know, one of the things that happens is, as we live in this world, I, I heard uh, uh, it said this way. The reason people don't want to be a Christian, the reason people don't want to be a believer is because they studied, when they look at us, they don't see the same love that Christ has. We talk about we Christ-like, but are we loving like Christ? Everybody Christ came in contact with, he loved them. Oh, hallelujah. And then those that, 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 that were against him, he dealt with them appropriately in a way that was still based on love. Hallelujah. Now, the outline that we're going to look at this, this, this morning is, number one, we're going to say, we're going to look at in the harmony in the fullness of time, we become one in Jesus by faith. And, and the reason I'm, I'm dealing with faith so much in this is because I have to deal with grace and I have to deal with the law. There's a difference between the law, and there's a difference between the law and grace. Some people are walking around thinking that they are saved by what they do. They are saved by the acts that they do. I'm saved because I give money to the church. I'm saved because I attend a church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every whenever I can get a chance. I'm saved because I'm a good person. 
Oh, I'm such a good person. I got a great heart. I'm a great person. That's why I'm saved, because I, I, I just do for everybody. No, nope. I'm sorry. You can have a good heart and go straight to hell. You can go to church every Sunday, every day of the week, and you can still end up straight in hell. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you, we're not justified by our works. We're not justified by the law. We're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. We got to believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Hallelujah. Now, some folks don't want to hear that. Some folks can't deal with that. They, oh, man, I got to be able to work for this thing. No. Jesus had already did the work. Jesus paid it all and all to him we owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, but Jesus washed it off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Now, the background of this text is what I was just dealing with. Galatians is a book written by Paul while, while he was uh, um, probably still in prison at this time. In this particular time, and he had to send a letter to them. Or it may have been at a time, some have said before he even went to prison, but there was something going on in Galatian that he had to deal with. And, uh, and the, the, the Galateans were having an issue. And, and this issue that they were having uh, was, was centered around these people we call Judaizers. Uh, uh, these were people who opposed non-Jewish people coming into Christianity without following um, the Christian law or the Mo not the Christian law, but the Mosaic law. In other words, they saying if you coming in, you got to be circumcised. You got you got to you got to work the works of them. Oh, hallelujah! Some reason my 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 conference call I me mean, my my conference call, but my my video on um, Facebook has stopped. So those that's on Facebook, if you, I mean, you can't even hear me right now. I'm sorry, but but let me let me go deeper. Let me go deeper for those that's on the conference call. The Judaizers is a term for Christians who insist that their uh, co-religiousness should follow the law of Moses and oppose and oppose, if you will, justification by faith. Uh, but the scriptures are clear, the just shall live by faith. We are justified, we are treated just as if we've never sinned because we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, so, so Paul had to deal with this, and, and he had to deal with it immediately. Uh, Galatians is one of those strange books where he's going into this deep argument with these people because he wants them to understand that, that, that if you don't get this, I don't know if you really say if, if you walking around trying to work your way into heaven, trying to climb up on the rough side of the mountain and all of that kind of stuff, the question becomes, are you really saved? And so, he had to deal with these people, and they 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 were vicious. They were vicious. They they walked around. They talked about him and called him everything but a child of God. They were very vicious against Paul because of what he did. They followed him all over the place. And, and here's the whole trip: the Jerusalem Council had already decided all of the Paul. I mean, uh, Peter, James, and John, and all of them had already decided that, 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 that when a Gentile, a non-Jewish person came into the faith, believing and trusting in Jesus Christ, when they came into the faith, that they were not required to follow the Jewish rituals such as circumcision. It was already decided. And, and so when that was decided, you know, it went throughout the whole land. Everybody knew that that was decided. But these was those people who descended from that. They didn't want, no, nah, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't, uh -uh. I don't care what they decided. We we know you got to be a, a, a Jewish proselyte before you become 
a Christian. That's just how it is. And so they develop this thing that you got to work. You got to do a work before you can accept Jesus Christ. And we are still dealing with these kind of people today. People are so busy wanting to see how your fruit is before they can accept you as a Christian. My, my Christianity ain't based on my works. My Christianity ain't based on my fruit. We, me and Barbara, Barbara Prosecchisi and I were laughing about this uh, on one of her conference calls because everybody seemed like they want to be a fruit inspector and decide whether you saved or not. But the whole thing is, my salvation is not based on your opinion or your inspection or your test. My salvation is based on the blood of Jesus. And I'm going to keep saying this, who died on the cross for my sins, who God raised from the dead, who, who is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. And that's who I am identified with. Now let's go into the text so we can see how we are identified with this. But let's chap be looking at chapter, chapter Galatians chapter 3. We're looking at Galatians chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 26. Listen to verse 26. Uh, he says, he says, for you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. Let, like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or a Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you all, you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. But you are, are, are his heirs and God's promises to Abraham belongs to you. I told you this this one of them deep lessons now. Now, now, now catch this, catch this. What, what is Paul trying to say here? Paul is first saying, look, you are saved by, by grace. Paul is saying, you, 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 you belong to Christ. You belong to God. You are son and a daughter of God because of your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then he says, now don't, don't get this, this twisted because see many people get this twisted for as many of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. He's using baptism in this situation as a sim symbol of what we went through when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because see, some folks will grab on onto this 27 verse and say, well, I like that. That's what it says. For many of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. If you ain't been baptized, ah, you ain't in Christ. That's a work. That's a work. When you got saved, you for verse 26 says, for you are sons of all sons through faith in Jesus Christ. You had to have faith first in Jesus Christ before you get baptized. Let me make that a little bit plainer. If you don't have faith in Jesus Christ before you get baptized, you just going to be a wet. Sinner going to hell when you come up out of that water. Oh yeah, you just going into some water and get wet. You might as well go home and just take a bath. Because you need faith in Jesus Christ. You got to confess him with your mouth. You got to believe in him with your heart. That he died on the cross for your sins. Let me go on. And so he says, for as many of you who were baptized in Christ, put on Christ. So Paul is saying, look, when you... After you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you went through the process of this baptism. What is this baptism? This baptism that you went through is a spiritual baptism. You, you, you say, Lord, I believe uh, that you died for me. So, so you died to your sins. You say, Lord, Lord, I, I'm, I'm buried under this water. I'm under the grave. I'm in the grave just like you was in the grave. Dead to my sins. 
then God raised you up just like he raised up Christ to the newness of life. So now you put on the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And then he says this now. He says, there is therefore neither, neither Greek nor Jew. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. For you all have been or all one in Christ. Oh man, that is just awesome. I mean, look at what he's saying. In this day and time, especially in this day and time, everybody is getting classified one way or another. You're black, you're white, you're rich, you're poor, you live in this country, you live in this country. There's all kind of division, no harmony going on anywhere. But he says, look at this. In, 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 in God's economy, in God's creation, he wants us that are in Christ Jesus. To understand that there is neither no Jew nor Greek, there is neither no slave nor free, there is neither no male nor female. So what that says to me, that if I was a Jew, I felt, oh, I'm part of the chosen generation. I'm the seed of Abraham. God has chosen us and he has brought us out of Egypt through the Red Sea, and he's given us the land. We are the chosen ones. We have the law of Moses. Yes, all of that is true. And a Jewish man, a Jewish woman, would look down their nose at a Greek or a Gentile. But Jesus is saying, no, it ain't about your heritage. It ain't where you was born. Don't you understand where you was born was just by happenstance? That was what I provided for you. So your heritage means nothing. So I'm talking to somebody right now. Just because you've been born as a black person or a white person, you don't, that don't make anything special about you. When it comes to God, your heritage does not matter. Then it says, not even your classification matters. Your color don't matter, neither does your classification. Whether you're a slave or whether you're free, all of that does not matter. Whether you're rich or whether you're poor, it does not matter. Then, your, whether you male or female, your, your, your genetic makeup has no bearing on this. And so, for a Greek, for a slave, and for a female, this is saying to them, you're just as equal as to a Jew, as to a rich man, as to a male. We're all equal at the cross. And we all, we all are one in Christ Jesus. And then he says in verse 29 of Galatians chapter 3, if you are, if you are Christ, then you, you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. Oh, hallelujah. All the believers are now heirs of the spiritual blessing that accompanies the Abraham, Abrahamic covenant. Meaning that just like Abraham was justified by faith and that he was going to be the father of many nations and that he was going to live in a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh, hallelujah. We are going to receive all the blessings of Abraham. Everything that God said he was going to give Abraham all the way back in Genesis, we receive all of those same blessings. 
Oh, we could spend a whole lot of time talking about the blessings of Abraham. And God blessed him so mightily. Now, that's God's promise. He promised it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he has kept his promises to them. He went on and he promised it to David and all of the kings of, of Israel. And then he's promised it to his own son. And now, we who are in Christ have put on the robe of Christ, his righteousness. So when God looks at us, he doesn't look at us as we see ourselves and as others see ourselves. He looks at us as if we were Christ himself because we have put on Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That means that we are one with Christ. We have become one in Jesus by faith. And so, God is saying in the fullness of time, I'm going to do some powerful things with you being one in Christ. God had to redeem us, had to redeem the whole world. And that's my last and final point, but it's the it's the it's the bulk of these these next seven verses. What kind of time I'm dealing with? It's 9:32. Lord, let's see if we can get this thing down in about 10 minutes. All right, here we go, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He says in, in this in this Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. This is what he says. Now I say. The heirs, as long as he is a child, does not differ to at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but under guardian and stewardship until the time they're appointed by the father. Now, 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 now what, what is, what, what, what are these people talking about? What are they talking about, y'all? That, 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 that we... We are heirs, and then you tell me I'm an heir, and then you tell me I'm a slave, all at the same time, and, and all of that kind of stuff. What is this stuff talking about? Well, this is, this is what they're talking about. If a child, parents die and leave them a will, and they leave them this great inheritance, the child does not have the mind and the power to exercise his, his uh, authority over the inheritance. Now, let me bring it into our modern day where people can understand it. When Bruce Wayne's parents got killed, <laughs> he was just a little boy. So he needed Alfred to take care of him until he became an adult and eventually became Batman. Okay, you got me? That's what I'm talking about here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, we understand that, that, that when Bruce Wayne was a little boy, it, it was the, the, the Alfred who was his tutor. It was Alfred that was his, 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 his butler. It was Alfred that, that taught him how to do all of that stuff. It was Alfred. Bruce Wayne was over everything, but Alfred was the one. That took care of him. He was his tutor. You with me? You with me now? Okay, okay, okay. So he said, that's, that's what we are right now. We, we, we are heirs of this promise, but, 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 but we haven't truly received it all. Why, why haven't we received it all? Let, let's go to verse 3. Let's go to verse 3. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time had come, God sent his forth, forth his son, born under the woman, born under the law. To do what? 
to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. When we when we were children, and we and when he's talking about children, we're talking about those of us who did not know God. When we were under the law, trying to do right according to the law of Moses. The law of Moses was like our Alfred. He was there to keep us safe, to guide us and direct us. It's like you're driving down the highway and, and, and he was our bumper guards. He was our stop signs. That's how the law is. The law keeps you and helps you understand what the difference between right and wrong is, but the law ain't never saved nobody. So you can't follow the law and get saved. All the law does is keep you safe until the time that you can get saved. So he says, and even Jesus himself, God's son, was born under the law. Meaning that he was born of a woman and born under the law. And being that he was born of a woman and born under the law, Jesus was kept by the law. He was tutored. He was instructed. He understood the law. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not this and thou shalt not that. Oh, well, that is the law. But in the fullness of time, he came. And then, he came that all of us, including himself, who was under the law, we might receive the adoption of sons. I, I like how he said the adoption of sons. Because, see, what he was doing, what Paul was doing was saying, look, y'all, when, when God sent Jesus Christ to come and, and, and hang on the cross and die for our sins, that was the fullness of time. Time changed when God, when Jesus came on the scene. We, you know, we went from A.D. to B.C. or, or B.C. to A.D. You know what I'm saying? Time changed. And, and what, what Jesus did, he changed everything. He gave us an ability to come into harmony with one another. Because we all become sons and daughters of God. How? God adopted us in to his family through the blood of Jesus the Christ. And listen to what he says. When God did this, he was redeeming us. Meaning that 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 that, that redeeming us, what he was doing was he, he, he was gaining and regaining possession of us. And, and redemption is based on the fact that Jesus paid the cost with his own blood. The blood of Jesus. That's what redeemed us. That's what gave him the power to regain possession of us. We had lost possession of ourselves when Adam and Eve Failed in the garden. But on Calvary's hill. On Gargotha's mountain. God. Let his own son die and bleed. To regain possession. Of all of us. Once he did that. Once he paid that cost with his blood. He redeemed us. And then he took us and adopted all of us as his sons and his daughters. So verse 6 of Galatians 
chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 says this, 6 and 7. This is what 6 and 7 says. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. That means that, that, that because we are saved, because he has redeemed us, because he has adopted us into the family, he has given us his spirit. It's in the inside of us. He's in the inside of us. And his spirit and us will call out to him, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Abba Father, we can call him our daddy. We can call him our Lord and our Savior. Daddy! Oh, I don't know if you ever call your daddy like that. That's when you know that you know. Because when you holler his name, oh, Abba Father, Daddy, he shows up and he shows out in our lives. You know, you may not have an earthly father where you can understand the concept, but we got a heavenly father that when you call his name, Daddy, mm -hmm, Daddy, well, Daddy will show up and he'll show out. And so, Paul concludes with this statement. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. If you're an heir, you ought to have harmony. You got your gifts. You got your possessions. You got all the things, the power. That a son of Jesus Christ, a son of God has, just like Jesus Christ. We are heirs. We are persons and people, men and women, who have the right. The legal right. To claim everything that God promised to his son. God promised to the seeds of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have the right. And we need to operate in this world with that kind of right. And when everyone believes in this, when everyone possesses this, then we will all be in harmony. I wish I could say this harmony would happen on this side of the Jordan. But I ain't going to lie to you like that. That harmony ain't going to happen here. The devil and the princes of this world, they constantly lie and give alternative facts. <laughs> I had to sneak that in. <laughs> they give alternative facts. So they, they, they just like their father, they the liars, and the truth ain't in them. But one glad morning, we ain't got to deal with that mess no more because we the children of God. We're the seed of Abraham. We've been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And we got a home up in heaven. And God gonna come and catch us all up that's still living. Those that are dead gonna rise first. And we're gonna be up in heaven with him singing glory, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. God's family is made up of people of every nation. That means that we have one family with Jesus, with, with, with children who have become from all kind of different areas. But we still are part of the same family. So we need to keep it that way as much as we can here on earth. Live that way. But we treat everybody that we come in contact with, whether they're racist or not, whether they're another color, another nation, treat them with love. That's what God wants. Let them see your light. Let them see your love. Amen.
let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for taking people from every nation and making us part of your family. We know when we get to heaven, we're going to be from every nation, race, creed, and color. There are going to be people who are rich or and poor with all of that stuff before they came to heaven. But there, we're going to all have complete harmony. We're going to have harmony so that we could all sing that song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He that is, was, and forever will be. And we'll be singing glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that you saved a wretch like me. Not through works, but you saved me through my faith in you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we close this broadcast on, on Facebook and those that are on the conference call with us, we always like to pray the prayer of salvation. Um, so let's pray the prayer of salvation, and we're going to close this session on Facebook. Dear Father God, I confess with you my with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and that you Buried, he was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins, Lord, and come into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life to rest and rule and abide in me from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me. Thank you, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Facebook, you be blessed. And as always, be a blessing till we see each other again.